for the British Army as a heavy recovery vehicle for recovering wheeled vehicles. They were not used for recovering tanks and crash vehicles. Um, they had armoured recovery vehicles for doing that, which were adaptations of, of uh, the actual tanks themselves. Uh, six to six, that is, uh, six wheel drives, drives for all wheels. Um, this one owned uh, uh, by Peter Stunt from Crowwood in Dorset. And uh, you can see there they're working on the suspended code. Uh, they've got the uh, camel behind, which is number 10, camel crusader. Um, Sorry, I've got the names wrong there. Robert Rowe was, of course, uh, uh, at the uh, rear of Mark and the people from the Crusader uh, uh, behind. And uh, you can see it picked up there on the back. And uh, that's the first of the recovery of the heavy uh, wheel. That was a very special one. And uh, that's the first of all that off and has been sort of the next. Uh, so certainly Robert was certainly the end there uh, very often. Uh, we'll do a suspended tow using that equipment. The Marshman, of course, uh, this one has a 7 litre engine, uh, 22 ton heavy tank recovery vehicle. As I say, only for the military. Um, this is the, the general service gun tractor version. Uh, would have towed, towed probably a pack howitzer behind as the pioneer tools on the front. It has the V8 uh, rover engine. Uh, that Buick engine that was probably one of the best deals that were ever, ever made because they used it in everything from the Range Rover to the uh, Ford Control Land Rover right through to the uh, Rover P5 and P6 cars. It's used for all sorts of things uh, and only went out of production a few years ago in actual fact. So that's the 101 Ford Control. That's the soft top general service contractor version. They had an ambulance version and they had a, a communication version well, sort of radio shack version. Put by both Willys and Ford. I'm not sure which one that is. Uh, you can tell by looking at the cross member under the radiator, but that's a bit difficult to do when they're driving past you. Uh, but the Jeep, of course, is a very uh, popular vehicle in the Second World War. Many hundreds, if not well, many thousands of them built. More unusual, this one, 1951 Unimog, yes, number 14, this is in your program, ex-Swiss Army. Uh, Unimogs, uh, very uh, commonly seen, you see a lot of them, but very much larger than this. This is one of the earlier ones. This is uh, very much a military vehicle, uh, four-wheel drive, obviously. Uh, it has a top top and it is so fast. unballasted tractor and was stationed at RAF Curtin in Lindsay and was used for pulling a 45 ton radar trailer. This is the 1985 Scammell S26 6x4 and I think Scammell used S26 back in the 1920s as well as a designation so it's a repeat of their old model number but uh, of course those Scammell, that particular model of Scammell uh, later was very often known as the Leyland. No nuts coming up now. Scammell Explorer, the uh, heavy recovery vehicle, um, the predecessor of the Leyland Martian. Um, this one, number nine. Uh, may I say 
be number six. It's number six. He's got his number on upside down. He caught me out on that one yesterday. Um, this one owned by Mr. Stiles from uh, Wiltshire. And this was number eight off the assembly line, apparently. Originally had an 11-litre petrol engine, now fitted with the Rolls-Royce Eagle, uh, which is more economical. Dates from 1950. Number 12 coming behind, Andy Mosley's 1951 Scammell Explorer. 325 horsepower, this one. And Andy's done some work over this last winter on some of the, uh, the, the door panels and the cab panels, which were suffering from a slight overdose of tin worm. You can see the crane on the back there. Hydraulic retractable crane. Crane also used, understandably, to lift the spare wheel on and off, because you couldn't lift that very easily yourself. And another one, number eight, the third of the trio. Uh, this is 1954, owned by Ian Rendell from Dorset, named Thor, and again, it's uh, a Scammell Explorer TL12. Uh, six for six, of course, six wheel drive, and tremendous articulation on those front axles. They have to be seen to believe, be believed off road. And how about this then? Uh, the 1967 Alvis XFV620. All military vehicles had an FVZ designation, which stands for fighting vehicle. Um, this Alvis amphibious vehicle, amphibious load carrier capable of going equally well on land and on water, often used as a backup for the, um, uh, the Royal Armoured Corps uh, as um, ammunition carriers. Um, Six-wheel chassis, drive to all six wheels. The same chassis was used for the Alvis uh, Saladin armoured car and also for the Alvis Saracen. And that has, uh, I think, um, um, water jet power for running on water. Nine ton capacity, incidentally, that one. Moving back, Second World War, lovely Bedford three-tonner here. Uh, the OY, I think, is. This is the wartime version. Yes, Bedford OY, 1943, owned by Mr. Locke uh, from Devon. And uh, this one has the 28 horsepower bedroom six-cylinder petrol engine and uh, was a very popular three-ton general service vehicle. It's been in the same family for 31 years and has done two Normandy D-Day celebration tours, uh, clocking up over 3,000 miles each time. And of course, that's the, I don't think that's the 4x4 version. The 4x4 version was the QL. If you look at the back axle of that, you'll see that the diff casing has got white paint on it. And that's because they used to have a little light in the, the back that uh, shone onto that. And so if you were driving in blackout conditions, you actually put the convoy light on so that you could see the vehicle in front and you didn't run into him. And then another of our Bedfords. We saw um, Peter Bold's uh, MW there in RAF livery, waving at me. Oh, I think he's waving at the Charlton's. We saw the Charlton's earlier in a rather more comfortable vehicle. Um, but this is another of the 1500 Bedford MWs, but this one has the aero screens. And, uh, well, they may have been all right on vintage Bentleys at Le Mans, but uh, in the Ardennes in the Second World War, they would not have been fun. And uh, otherwise, very similar to the REF Bedford we've seen out there, but still has the canvas cab, has a canvas door that you can put across, but just has the aero screens rather than the full windscreen. <clears throat> Moving on now to post-war uh, military vehicles. This is the first of our Rios. Owned by the Bowles family. James Bowles driving it. I think it's the first time I've seen James this weekend. Left-hand drive, of course, for a military, um, well, for an American vehicle. And uh, this is 1958. This is the M35A2, six-cylinder multi-fuel engine. It's known as the Whistler, and you can tell why, because of the turbo. 
These were all built to American uh, government specification. And they were built by a number of companies. Rio built them and Kaiser Jeep built them as well. This is the Wadham family's uh, version. This one has a, a water decom decontamination unit on the back. They put all sorts of bodies on the back of these. This one in uh, desert camouflage colors, obviously. With the American we were talking about uh, on the running board there. Another one coming up here, and this has the communications body on the back. This is number two, also owned by the Bowles. Rallied by Chris and Kelly Saunders, I'm told. Or I read here. So three rails there, but three with showing the, the different variety of bodies that you had on these vehicles. And of course, one of the things about military vehicles, uh, having a chassis, uh, you can, could and can very easily vary uh, the type of body you fit on. Uh, 29, 50, 50 cali caliber girl, this is. Uh, and uh, 1943 Willys Jeep, owned by Mr. Thomas from Weymouth. Markings of the 80, 82nd Airborne Division. And you wouldn't quarrel with that vehicle, not with that uh, hardware they've got in there. Two whip aerials as well for the radio. And yes, that is the Willys as opposed to the uh, Ford Jeep. And also, Mr. Thomas, Mr. A. Thomas from Weymouth with this Dodge. 1942 Dodge WC-51. I missed his number yesterday. I did guess it was a WC-51. I was right. 52 has got a winch on the front. Is that right? Yes. Oh, the old brain is still working. But there's even more uh, hardware on that one. But uh, often referred to as the weapons carrier, which uh, they are both doing there, or this, that one is doing, actually. Um, there was the WC-61 and 62 as well, which I think was the six-wheel version, but that is the, the 51. Dates from 1942.